Hello there. Welcome to the user interface overview of Shopfloor Machining. If you're just joining me now in this video series, make sure you have the Shopfloor Machining application installed and set up a couple preferences. If you haven't, there's a previous video detailing those steps. Of course, if you've already done that and are ready to go like me, let's get started. We'll take a look at what we see here and dive into the user interface of the Shopfloor Machining app. Now, just like you saw on the platform on your browser, there's the compass at the upper left. It functions very similarly, except for one thing. From any of the desktop applications, the play button is an actual button, which allows you to run simulations and play out actions. Everything else though, works the same. Clicking on the ring portion of the compass reveals your available roles and their dedicated applications. As an NC programmer, we're focused on shop floor machining. So one of the first things I do is move things into my favorite apps section, which makes it convenient to find later on. For shop floor machining, I'll just go ahead and do a quick search of the word machining and the app should show up. I'll just click and drag the app icon into my favorite apps over here. Maybe I want to use wire EDM also. I can do the same thing. As you progress within shop floor machining, your database will be populated with all kinds of data types. Going forward, I'm going to be referring to these data types as objects. Every object in the 3DX platform carries a three-digit code called a trigram. For NC machining programmers like us, we'll be seeing a lot of the same objects, like a manufacturing cell. The trigram for that kind of object is NCC. So a quick search within manufacturing cells can be done by typing in NCC colon, followed by whatever you're searching for. You'll see me using this methodology often. There are multiple methods to filtering and sifting through your data, but the ease of doing so is helped by using some kind of naming convention and creating tags when it makes sense. You're at the start of your journey within shop floor machining, so starting good naming habits and using tags are one of the many ways you can stay organized and stay efficient. Okay, moving over here to your right, you have your common space. This area displays the 3D spaces that you have access to. You can switch between different spaces here or change your responsibility rights for your session. Next is the user icon. Clicking this reveals my status options for the working group I am a part of. Below that is the preference page we had covered in the install video. Now if I wanted to work offline, you can check out your license and reserve it for a number of days. This will allow you to run the application offline with offline content that is locally saved. Now here's where you can set favorite content. Say I'm working on this cell and will be for quite a while. I can then save it as a favorite and quickly access it through my favorites in the search bar. The plus button allows you to create new content. When I say new content, it's really any type of object that the platform allows you to create. So it could be say a manufacturing cell or a physical product. One spot over is where I can do my saving, sharing, messaging, or exporting. These functions are pretty self-explanatory. The question mark here is where you can find your help, access to communities, and the support hub. If you need to reach your landing page, that's here. And anytime you need to find your machining wizard, that would be here also. For anyone that's dealing with support, you can click on the about to learn what version of 3D experience you're working with. Also, as you continue to use the platform, an icon will occasionally display over the question mark, indicating that there is a newer version or hotfix available. You can follow the directions on how to update them from the prompts provided. All right, so let's get to the areas that are more specific to CAM programming. To the left here is what we call the docking area. You have your activities process view, your manufacturing view, your resource config view, probes, and your tree. For your activities process view, this is where you'll see all of your toolpaths, all of your programming efforts, meaning the operations, machine commands, etc., will be displayed and listed here. The manufacturing view will contain all of the features that are essential to your programming efforts. So let's say you want to create a drilling operation and decide to perform an automatic hole search. Multiple holes with identical dimensions could be recognized and grouped into a single feature, allowing you to program all of them with a single operation. That feature will be generated and stored here within the manufacturing view. The resource config view will be the place where you see all of your objects that exist within your manufacturing cell. And when I say that, I'm referring to essential parts of the machining environment, like the CNC machine, 
tools, machining accessories, and anything else that should be physically represented. Your probes tab is pretty simple. This is a place where you can turn on or off the ability to check for clashes. In this case, against the machine or against the stock. These are active during simulation and it allows you to identify any interference coming from your programming. And of course, the last part of your docking area would be your tree. Your tree is essentially the display of all the data that's within this particular object, which in our case is the manufacturing cell. Okay, down below is a toolbar that has all your essential commands and operations for machining. You'll find yourself using these tabs frequently in a normal programming workflow. We'll cover these features in more detail in other videos, but it is worth familiarizing yourself with the locations of certain buttons. I don't expect you to remember the location of all these things, or know what all of them do right away. Fortunately, that's why we have the machining wizard. From the question mark, you can turn that on. This workflow highlights the essential steps to create a functional NC program. The first couple steps are to import the product, which is the part we want to machine, and then import resources. For us, resources mean an NC machine, cutting tool, or some other object not considered the product. At minimum, you are required to import an NC machine or create a generic machine to satisfy this requirement. So, you will go through the process of importing all the resources you plan to use, or import a completely pre-configured, ready-to-use manufacturing cell. Once the first two sections are satisfied, defining the part operation becomes available. Completing the part operation should open up the rest of the wizard. Now I'm not going to go into detail for each section of the workflow yet. We will break down the steps in later videos. Just know that this wizard exists if you need a little help. All right, let's do some importing of data into our database so that we can actually work on machining a part. I'm gonna go ahead and import a 3DXML and SOLIDWORKS part that I have downloaded. Both of these files are available to you in the fabrication community. The link is in the description down below. Once you've downloaded those files, follow these steps to import. You can use the import command at the top, but my preferred method is to simply just take the file from your local drive and just drag it into the working area. Once the import is complete, the data will open up for you to view and is immediately available for use. Do this for each file. This new data could take a moment to index into the database. So if you're wanting to search for something that you recently imported, give it a little bit of time and it should be searchable very shortly. Awesome. If you follow along, you've now got some data in there that we can make use of in our next steps. We're going to focus on tooling resources in the upcoming video and then follow that up with creating a template machining cell. We're getting pretty close to creating some toolpaths and that's pretty exciting. So let's continue to take care of the basics and I'll see you in the next one.